This is Lance Lichter for AA Today on behalf of Dr. Tal Levy. The accuracy of end tidal CO2 is based on nasal cannula design. Basic anesthesia care includes monitoring exhaled end tidal carbon dioxide concentration in patients undergoing sedation. The challenge is to measure end tidal gas concentration through a cannula that is also tasked with delivering supplemental oxygen. In their article, published in this month's issue of Anesthesia and Analgesia titled The Effectiveness of Oxygen Delivery and Reliability of Carbon Dioxide Waveforms, a Crossover Comparison of Four Nasal Cannulae, the authors compare the ability of four different nasal cannula to provide an increased fraction of inspired oxygen as well as to accurately detect end tidal CO2. Forty-five healthy volunteers between the ages of 18 and 35 were tested, each using all four of the nasal cannula designs. Monitoring included ECG, posterior pharynx oxygen sampling through a hog airway, and nasal cannula end tidal carbon dioxide. Eleven of the volunteers had arterial lines placed from which to draw samples of blood that were analyzed by an iStat system to provide partial pressure of oxygen and carbon dioxide. Data were collected while the volunteers were breathing room air, as well as at 2, 4, and 6 liters per minute of supplemental oxygen. The four models of nasal cannula included the Hudson bifurcated cannula, which both delivers oxygen and samples carbon dioxide within each nasal prong, the Medline oxygen blow-by dual vents, which provides blow-by oxygen from a cloud outside the nares via small holes in the main part of the nasal cannula, while both prongs are used to sample carbon dioxide. The Iridian oxygen blow-by via multiple vents, whose design is similar to the Medline oxygen cannula described above, and the Salter Labs, sponsor of the study, separate oxygen delivery, CO2 sampling cannula, in which oxygen is delivered through one prong, while carbon dioxide is sampled through the other prong. The authors found the bifurcated nasal prong design resulted in inaccurate end tidal CO2 readings as oxygen was delivered. The multi-vented nasal cannula, using the blow-by oxygen cloud, did not provide the increase in FiO2 that the other models were able to provide. The Salter Labs nasal cannula, with separate prongs, one for oxygen delivery and one for carbon dioxide sampling, was the only one able to reasonably measure end tidal CO2 while providing high levels of oxygen delivery. Consistent with this, it also provided the highest pharyngeal oxygen concentration. Patients in the study had no comorbidities, including no incidence of deviated septum or unilateral nair obstruction. Also, the patients in the study were not sedated, and the potential inaccuracy of end tidal CO2 data collection in patients during hypoventilation, low tidal volume breathing, or mouth breathing, states that would be most applicable to clinical usage, is well known. Lastly, the cannula that performed best is the one manufactured by the Salter Labs, the study sponsor. The study design appears to be entirely objective, but the findings should be replicated by a study not funded by the manufacturer to be confident that subtle aspects of the study design did not favor the sponsor's product. Anesthesiologists are constantly refining techniques for making the operating room safer. Because vigilance is so important, the American Society of Anesthesiologists added monitoring of end tidal carbon dioxide to the ASA standards for basic anesthesia monitoring in July of 2011. Studies like this can help us to learn how to do this most effectively. For links and more, go to aatoday.org. That's aa, the number two, day.org. This is Lance Lichter. <laughs>